You know, there is an idea of a perfect Mercedes. It's got to be the best. And I mean the best of the best. It's got to be well-dressed. It's got to have the colors. It better be a deal. And of course, it's got to be oh so in condition. Gentlemen, I think it just might be the 600 W140 S-Class. And I will make a promise to you, I will not repeat a single thing that you've already heard. This is a deep review. Let's go. And right away, I'm gonna start off with a good one. Look at this photo. Some of you that may be familiar with the auction, you might be thinking, no, it can't be. But yes, that's right, that is Distronic. Gentlemen, that's actually, that's really a huge deal. I invite you to join me on Twitter to get more details. Oh, that ain't aftermarket. That's S-Class Japan. I mean, you can go Maybach as old school, as fancy, and as tacky as you want. Now to a feature that's actually inside the car. Four zone climate control. Now look, obviously it has two completely separate AC systems. Well, actually in a way it's got three. You may be thinking, did Mercedes just run out of ideas? It's the auxiliary. You can turn on the heating in the vehicle either by presetting the time here or remotely with this, and it ignites a separate burner. In a way, really, this is Mercedes doing remote start without actually starting the engine in what, 1992? There is a sun sensor in the vent on the hood. It's designed to keep track of the position of the sun we all know double glazed windows three millimeters of dehumidified air trapped in between they touch and become flush with the door body even the radio it adjusts for noise if you have it set while you're driving a certain speed and you speed up the radio will ever so slightly increase in volume as well automatically compensating for the little bit of extra noise go down in speed it follows suit i'm not making this up what about the speakers it can't just be normal comes pre-pimped with four subwoofers in the rear proper range speakers along the side but there's a secret speaker there is a center fill mid-range speaker located right behind the rear view mirror you know you want to be on the footsteps of true surround sound that is pretty clever hey listen even the windshield washer fluid system is pretty impressive it's all heated six jets and about those wiper blades mercedes tested them at 120 miles an hour this vehicle didn't warn you against smoking or speeding it showed you how to do it properly. Now look here, they welded the C-pillar to the roof. Highly elegant, highly expensive, but they decided to crease it anyway. And they did that because they wanted to create a rainwater channel. It's designed to direct rain and water away from the occupant entrance and the windows. Gap accuracy on the S-Class is within four one hundredths of an inch that road fortress door thickness you know this photo is an exaggeration but maybe not by much look at all these steps i am not reading all that i'll put links down below what's amazing is the behind the scenes it's a pneumatic system but it's a quiet pneumatic system and even the locking mechanism of that pneumatic system is coded for extra quietness not to mention the central locking in this car is its own separate complete pneumatic system as well two pneumatic systems not one if you're a w220 owner for long enough you'll appreciate that fact just notice that chrome plate behind the door handles it's just enough to prevent paint scratching notice that trim around the windows pay attention here that is a crystal finish it's called hemodite it's a hard oxide mineral its name is derived from the greek word blood and in greek mythology it represents the blood of your enemies that's appropriate you know it doesn't contrast the windows it just complements them it's it's just gorgeous this video is brought to you by my amazon links down below thank you and by my thesis on my favorite crypto meme coin look if you're into moonshots you might want to read it down below <laughs> the retentioning system when the car is turned on it retracts just a bit to give you that nice hug they call and when the car is turned off the retraction is more hard you don't gotta feed it it just whoosh. you know what i mean even the anti-theft system there's several layers to it it's got the outside motion in case someone's towing it away and it's got infrared on the inside motion detecting you didn't think it was simple did you the mercedes didn't have an optional cell phone 
It had two. One for the front, one for the rear, obviously. Both voice activated. Hey Siri, circa 1992. And yeah, the audio system would automatically pause for incoming calls and outgoing calls. Ah, just imagine, it's 1992. You're on hold with your broker because you're trying to fill that Microsoft stock order. I don't know, at a buck fifty a share. But you gotta get out of the car because you gotta sign for that 2,500 square foot detached in Miami for, I don't know, $97,000. All right, maybe 120. Well, what do you do? You gotta take the handset and disconnect it from the cord and just leave the car. And you can do that mid call. Now that, man, this was Mercedes really doing it. And this is in really good condition. And guess what? It's for sale. Hey everybody, it's Michael T here with Trento Kia. Just wanted to give a big thank you for Daniel. We have a lot of more stuff coming here at Trento Kia. If you guys want, you can follow my Instagram page. And we're here located in Woodbridge, Ontario, Canada. Thank you guys so much. Call him and give him a hard time. So you know what? Let's break it down. First things first, and really listen to me. If you're in your teens and 20s and fall under the 95th percentile, don't even think about it. Now don't get bummed out, I'm here to save your financial life. Do not own these vehicles. Think about your financial future and start building your wealth to play real life Monopoly. Don't burn your money on these kinds of rides. Shout out to you, Daniel, for noticing this. Daniel Kahn, K-O-N, who apparently makes automotive YouTube videos. Believe me, every car guy will tell you the same thing that's been through this. All right, now that I've cleared my conscience, we can move on back to the deal. It's got some electrical issues with the rear windows. They don't go back up modules. Plus, there's a few things here and there, minor cosmetic, but the body and the mechanics, it's good. Obviously, you see an S600 in a Kia dealership, and that's an automatic red flag. It should be. But this is the dealership's owner's car. You know, suddenly that sounds good. Here's the VIN. You look into it. And it's so smooth and flowy with the road. It is unreal. No, and I, like, holy crap, that's not just salesman talk, that's like legit, oh yeah, holy shit. I know, for real, that suspension will outclass many of today's luxury label vehicles, and maybe some of its predecessors too. Hydraulic suspension, double wishbone, rear axle level control, the chassis, the subframe itself, it's so good, they put it right into the W240, the Maybach, and the rear multi-link, like anti-dive control, and that is the lightest steering wheel I've ever felt. That was almost, that was so low effort, I had a moment. A video doesn't do this well, and we really got to take a moment to really appreciate the presence of Road Fortress. I mean, look at that comparison there. That is a Kia Sportage. That is a crossover SUV. Are you getting the picture of the presence of this sedan? Road Fortress. But back to this case, you'll have your poker face and your low ball ready. But you got to be careful because you might lose it. Yes, that right there is the M120 V12 used currently today in the Pagani supercars. It's not just the most gorgeous engine Mercedes has ever made, it might actually be the greatest. That is a one piece, single cast air intake. Oh my God. Each bank has its own completely separate fuel injection and ignition system, completely separate if need be. One side will work completely independently of the other. Of course, just look around, the story continues. In a normal car, you've got a single firewall. In an S-Class, you've got two bulkheads in between them. The electronic control modules, they're completely sealed and ventilated with the cabin air to keep the right temperature to ensure the electronics. The electrical connections, they're all silver plated. The hood gets a luxurious patterned headliner. Even the headlamps have access panels. Gentlemen, these are the things that they mean when they say the most over-engineered in the world. The 722.6 five-speed transmission. It, it adapted to your driving style, continuously keeping track of the last 40 shift points, monitoring several inputs to become perfect for you. That five-speed was so good it was still used in the AMGs and the 600s going up to W221. Going down the line, even the drive shaft, it's two pieces instead of one. Why? Because it's that much smoother and it performs that much better under critical load. This is the kind of stuff that they put in upgraded trucks. Listen, something like just basic power steering wasn't even standard until like 1998. Ventilator brakes. All four of them, optional, attached to it, of course, a modern proportional braking system, and of course, the entire system is dual-circuited, even the fuel pump. Dual it. There's two of them. I don't know the details. These are the kind of things that you only really find 
deep in the forums. If you know something clever, type it, I'll pin it. it. It really comes down to this. Pick any part of this car and chances are you'll find madness behind it. Even something like the engine mounts. Back in the day, even some cars today, it's just simple rubber mounts. In this vehicle, there's an entire thing with hydraulic fluid, diaphragm, this and that, blah, blah. But it works. It's this much more complicated to make it that much better. And they'll do it. ADS, ESP, ASR, BAS, ABC, I mean ABS. Say hi to daddy. Now, but you see, there were two explicit goals for the boys. One, make the most luxurious sedan in the world. And two, make it the safest. This vehicle's greatest luxury is its ability to save your life. You see, Road Fortress has a lot, and I mean a lot, of high-strength, low-alloy steel. These steel members are actually designed to crumple at a programmed rate of impact. They fork, spreading the energy down the transmission tunnel and over the A-pillars. In the rear, the fuel tank is right behind the passenger seat. This, this allows for an even greater crumple zone range. How many vehicles in the 90s do you think had intrusion beams in the doors? This is all designed specifically for critical impact. You see, even the doors and locking mechanisms were specifically designed in an offset way to still function in the event of a crash. Which is why on August 31st, 1997, French doctor Frédéric Melies was able to simply open the door and provide aid to a living and responsive Lady Diana. The dramatic footage we see is always conducted at 40 miles an hour. Beyond that, with every additional increment of speed, things become really scary really quickly. The results become exponentially more dire. And at real highway speeds, it's not severe chassis compromise, it's complete destruction. That S-Class hit that concrete pillar at an estimated 85 miles an hour. Had it been any other 90s vehicle, there wouldn't be survivors, there wouldn't be bodies. In the event of an accident, the airbags go off, later models had the sides, knee bolsters, the steering wheel is decoupled to prevent intrusion, the brake pedal itself retracts. Even that thick floor padding is designed to be impact absorbing. And of course, those seat belts. They have a third resistance level, an emergency retraction. And we know as the story goes, well, you know, I've made that same mistake myself more than once. The front passenger seat is considered the death seat, statistically the least survivable in a serious crash. And yet that passenger survived. Lady Diana, of course, was shortly rushed to hospital where she was pronounced dead about two hours later. And the photos are curious, because from what I can see, Road Fortress did its job. The A-pillar looks intact. It seems like there is no cabin intrusion. The engine literally pushed underneath the car, that's where it's meant to slide down. The most common photos are the ones after they took the jaws of life to the car, and they chopped it up to bits. You don't see the pillars anymore, but in the tunnel, it's a different story. They lifted the vehicle inside the tunnel, only to, to unstrap it outside of the tunnel all over again. And there's not many photos from the front. And you know, there's so many angles missing. The driver and the man behind him were pronounced dead on the scene, officially. You know, I swear that the S-Class is a very limited appeal. A gentleman's club. I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised.